Welcome back to Big Dan's Air Gun Reviews. As we had promised in our last video, the next gun we're going to be taking a look at is the Finale in the Cometa Spring Gun range, which is the one and only and absolutely beautiful, in my opinion, Cometa Fusion. A gun that's so big that I have to do this at a funky angle just to get the whole gun in the screen. But after this, and I can hear the sighs of relief from the PCP crowd, we will be looking at the Cometa PCP range, such as the Orions, the Advances, the Lynxes, you name it. So rest assured, we'll be doing some uh, pfft guns next. But first off, we're going to take a look at this bad boy. So let's have a look at the Fusion and see just what you get for your money. So as always with our features, we move off to the rear of the rifle. As you can see, you've got a nicely finished rubber recoil pad. We'll talk a little bit more about how it recoils and such, and maybe how that might affect us when it comes to the handling section. Slightly further along, we have a Monte Carlo style stock and cheek piece. However, the cheek piece itself is adjustable. Much like a lot of the other Cometa guns, the stock itself, or cheek piece I should say, is very friendly to lefties as well. So you should have, a lefty should have no trouble shooting this gun. Moving slightly further forwards, you've got a really lovely dot style checkering design that you, I've, you don't really see much on the gun. You can see some of that lovely stain coming through as well. You don't really get this sort of checkering on most guns, but we'll talk a little bit more about that a bit later on. Slightly further forwards, we have the adjustable two-stage trigger, which is plastic, unfortunately. But again, that's a handling section doodad. We won't go too, into too much detail here. We have also got the same automatic safety as found on the Fenix rifles and such. But again, that's a handling section thing. The bluing on this gun is absolutely lovely as well. I mean, it's not coming up the best in the camera at the moment because the lighting's a little bit dim where we are. We could go out in the sun, but quite frankly, it's about 32 degrees today, a complete opposite scenario than what we had with our 400 review but uh, I'm not going out there at this moment in time I'll put it that way. We've got a little bit more of this lovely dot style checkering and I love that pattern on there as well it's such an eye-catching piece of woodwork it really is. Slightly further forwards we have got this lovely chunky metal barrel with at the tip of this barrel we do also have a muzzle brake. Now what I'm also happy to uh, say is that this is metal there is no plastic in there whatsoever. But again, we'll see if that makes any real difference or not when it comes to the handling section. I mean, on a spring gun with UK power levels, I'm slightly dubious perhaps, but we'll see how it kicks when we have the thing actually in the shoulder. And that is pretty much it. But it is a lovely looking thing. It really is. And I do love that big, chunky, sort of half fluted almost kind of barrel that you can see going on. Hopefully you can see the way it's sort of cut out or sort of tapered here and then goes into the thickness of the rest of the barrel here. That is a lovely, lovely extra touch, it really is. But that is the features of the Cometa Fusion. Now, I wonder how heavy it is. Let's crack the scales out and find out. Okay, so we have the scales out and she comes out at 7.3 pounds. So it's not a particularly heavy gun, despite the rather generous dimension, shall we say. But yeah, it's not a particularly heavy gun at all. So most people should be able to shoulder this and shoot it. But Speaking of shouldering, how about we put the thing in the shoulder now and see how she feels. Cometa Fusion, what do we think? First things first, I'm going to apologise about the fact that I'm looking very casual today. Uh, the reason for that, as we may have mentioned earlier, it's a, over 30-ish degrees uh, here today. My face is swarming with those thunderbug things, whatever they're called. Um, and yeah, it's, it's not that pleasant, I'll put it that way. So just be glad you don't have smell-o-vision at this moment in time. But the Fusion, what do we think? Well. For such a long gun, I mean, you might have seen, we've actually had to change the aspect ratio on this footage here just to get the, hopefully, get the whole thing in camera. Hopefully you can see that muzzle brake on the end. Um, it really behaves itself. It's, I mean, you wouldn't see me doing this really too much with my 97, I'll put it that way. But it, it's a genuinely very nice feeling gun. I mean, putting it to the shoulder, what I will say as well is that checkering is absolutely stunning. That sort of dot style pattern, bring it a little bit closer so hopefully you can see it maybe a tad better. That dot style pattern on there is really deep and it is just, why I like it is it's very unique. You don't see this that often. And you know, on this channel, if you've seen a few of my videos already, you'll know that I like unique gear. I love things that are cheap, that punch well up, and I like things that are just a bit different. And this is more than a bit different, I'll put it that way. It's not your average Vire Arc or Air Arms, I'll put it like that. Uh, but overall, when shouldering, it is really nice. The other thing you're going to notice is we've also adjusted this cheek PC. You should hopefully be able to see that's been raised a bit since you saw it in the feature section. Lovely, lovely feature. The other thing I like is with a lot of guns, they don't stain 
the parts of the stock, say if you've got something adjustable, the pieces of wood where they separate from each other is usually not stained. A lot of companies don't bother with that, whereas this, they most certainly have, which again, didn't have to do it, but really lovely feature and extra mile they've gone with this gun. Now, let's have a look at the shot cycle and such. Oh, that's smooth. Long barrel. The, the Kometa guns are lovely and smooth, the cock anyway, but this thing with that great big barrel on there, we knew that was going to be silk, and that is silky smooth. Return that. All right, now the safety, as you know, it is the same unit as what you have with the Fenix 400s and such that we reviewed on our last video, but just in case you haven't seen that one, the safety is a push button affair on the rear of the action. Very similar to some of the Hatsan rifles, some of the Webleys in the past, like my Eclipse, if you've seen our underlever shoot off videos, has got a similar safety to this. It's my favorite design of safety because if you're out on the field and you're hunting and say something pops up, you can just quickly and then you're ready to go. Or if that rabbit maybe sees you coming and does a Bugs Bunny and <coughs> he's gone, you can just pull it back on again, simple as that. A lot of safeties, it's a silly little thing, but with a lot of safeties, such as the Virarc safety, probably one of the most famous uh, automatic safeties on spring guns, with that, you've got a push button. You push it off and then basically, you can't really put it back on again. You can if you break the barrel down again and re-cock the gun, but it's just a bit of a faff. And sometimes, depending on the gun, it can actually sort of drag up some of the grease that's inside the action and you can get a very smoky shot afterwards. At least that's what we noticed with our 97. But with this, it's just a lovely, push button affair and off you go. So now let's talk trigger and let's talk shot cycle. So let's give this a go. Shot cycle is fast. I mean, seriously fast. You've got that long barrel on there, which originally I thought is gonna make it a little bit awkward maybe. It could make it hold sensitive, we don't know. But that action is quick. You might have seen then it was and that was on its way. Also, not a whole lot of kick for a 177 either. The thing that I'm a little bit irked about, which you know is coming, is the trigger unit is, I'm bloody smothered in these bugs. <laughs> the trigger unit is the same as what you get on the 400. Nothing wrong with that. The unit itself is quite nice. In fact, I'll do the little finger test in a moment, um, but it is plastic. And on the, the new flagship rifle such as this, you would want a metal blade on there, really. It would just finish off the looks of it so much. But again, Kometa, if you're listening, I love the gun so far, but please come on, put some metal on here and some metal in there. If you can do it on the 300 and the 100 and the 220, surely you can do it on this. But let's give that another go. Now the trigger is very, very similar to what you have on the, fe the uh, Fenix. I keep getting the names mixed up. Now if you can see this, hopefully, let me get a bit closer for you. Right, there. That's the beginning of second stage. Now, if you look, there's a tiny, almost little gritty bit of creep there. You can see that. And then off she goes. It's light, as you saw there. I was not straining at all to pull that with the little finger, but there is that tiny little bit of grit before that second stage. You really feel it then kick in and then off it goes. I'm sure you could adjust that out of it. Maybe you could polish them sears and bring them back, but it's worth mentioning. The trigger's not record unit levels. That Virac trigger is beautiful, and in my opinion, it's still the greatest trigger ever fitted to a spring gun. But, although I've heard the Diana T06 is good, and the Air Arm CD unit is really not far behind, but this is not a bad trigger, it's gotta be said. It, it's up there, I'll put it that way. It doesn't upset the gun. If I have some crappy shots, it won't be the trigger that's doing it, I'll put it to you like that. But it's just got that little bit of grit that maybe could be done with getting rid of and make that metal. The other point I'm gonna make is, did you see I was holding that not even properly with basically barely a hand on the forestock and that didn't really kick? Let me show you. Let's do it one more time. Oh, give that a little tap. Right, let's have a look. Watch this, so 177. Granted, we don't know what power it's doing. It's got that lovely clunk when you return it. Right, you don't know what power it's doing. Complete open palm. I'm gonna have to get it more or less on target because I do not want to hit that barn. Right, so open palm very lightly gripped in fact it's barely been in my shoulder at all and let's take a look nothing the tiniest little and that's it that is a well set up gun it's got to be said but overall at this moment in time i am very 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 impressed but we don't know what power it's doing so why don't we whack out the chronograph and let's see just what this gun can do over the chrono let's take a look at consistency and let's take a look at overall power so Let's move on and see what she can do. 
Okay, so chronograph time. We have got the chronograph set and ready with the rifle off to the right hand side. The pellets we're going to be using are the 8.4 grain Air Arms Diablo field pellets and the camera will be focused onto the phone so as you can see a live reading as to what the gun's doing. We're going to do our first test now and then we're going to do another test a bit later on the video just to see roughly what you might be able to expect when the guns run itself in a tiny little bit more after we usually put around say maybe 150 pellets through it just to do pellet testing and such like that. The barrel has had a clean, apologies if I've already mentioned that. Um, so it's pretty much, it's out the box at this moment in time, ready to go. So you get to see roughly what you can expect when you've got the rifle yourself. So that's enough of that. Let's get the gun all locked and loaded and let's see with 20 shots what sort of spread and consistency and power we can get. Okay, so chronograph results, how did the gun do? Well, you can see if I bring this down, we've got an average of 775 FPS, which work, works its way out to 11.2 feet pounds. You can see that just up the top. 11.2, power's pretty good, considering, I mean, the pellets we're using 8.4 grain. The, the air arms pellets usually give you pretty good oomph, same as the JSBs. So if it stays about 11.2, it would be spot on, or just 11-ish plus would be superb. Um, the power you can see, it is settling in the more that we shoot it. It starts at 11.35 and we even get one that goes up to 11.41. Then it starts to slowly bring itself down. So with a few shots through it, we'll see it'll probably burn off or it might even climb a tiny little bit and then settle. We'll see how it goes. Consistency wise, we had a spread of 20 FPS, which is about the same off memory to what we got with the HW80 and my 97, I believe, we put through. In fact, I think the 97 might have been a bit worse. I think it was about 25, 27 something like that so spreads not bad it's acceptable straight out the box and standard deviation is 4.96 feet per second per shot which again is not really going to be all that noticeable unless you take it to absolute extreme extreme ranges but we'll see how it does when it leads itself in a bit more and see what happens with the power a bit later on in the episode so now what we're going to do we're going to do some pellet testing off camera to keep this video hopefully as short as possible and we're going to do some pellet testing and then record some groups with the best pellets that we got and just have, let you have a walk through the range and such like that. There's a tiny little bit of gust today, but it's not too bad. So hopefully it shouldn't have too much of an effect on accuracy. So I'll get to work and I'll be back when we see what the rifle likes. Okay, so we've just done some quick off-camera accuracy testing and pellet testing. This is 25 yards, no rest. As you can see, the bag is all the way over there. Uh, no rest, but we will be resting when we do the 25 yard shots as this is, I consider it more a target rifle really than potentially anything else. Uh, but let's have a look how we did. Well, we've got some rifle field domes here, which, nah, didn't really like them to be honest. QIS were an odd one. They might be worth another try. It might be me maybe pulling them up here, but I don't think so. We've got a neat little cluster of four shots here, but then they just started spraying off. SMK blacks. Now these are interesting because we, don't get me wrong, we've got two shots way down, but look at these. We've got three almost through the same hole, so we might give them another trial in a minute, see how they do. We put some Barracuda matches through there, which the gun just did not like. Obviously, it's not really a spring gun pellet. It's way too heavy, and it did cause the gun to buck just a little bit, so we didn't put any more than five through there. We've also got the Pro Shot pellets, which, no offense to them, but I've yet to really find a barrel that they group in. They're all over the place. We took out some Wasps, see how they did, and unfortunately, it was not going to be a... Uh, fairy tale victory for the the wasp today it sort of shot all over the place however this is where it gets interesting we've got three groups on this one card because i didn't really feel like going up and changing the card it's a bit hot i'll put it that way we've got the spitfires which i gave a bit more of a chance than a lot of them because it was almost like it was trying to group here but then after that it started throwing them so not having any of it we've got the narika match which eh, not bad but not great but then we have the Air Arms Diablo field. We probably see this coming. We've got one shot off to the left, which I'm happy to say is me. There's a tiny little breeze, but it's not too bad. Uh, but we've got another five shots through the same hole here. So it looks like the Air Arms are definitely going to be there. And the good old Super Domes. Look at these. One solid sh uh, group there, five shots, unrested. It doesn't get much better than that. But admittedly, not the longest range, only 25 yards. But considering we are outside and that was without the rest, I'm pretty well pleased with that. It goes to show the barrel on these is genuinely, 
it's as top drawer as I hoped it'd be. I'll put it that way, but I'm sure the lack of recoil and such is also doing that too. Right then, so it looks like for our 25 yard shoot off, we're gonna be using the, mm, let's go Superdome and Diablo Field, I think. We'll eliminate the rest. Superdome and Diablo Field, we'll see which one does the best at 25 on camera. And then what we'll do after that is we'll then move out to 35 yards and see how we get on then. So let's get the target shooting. Right then, 25 yards off the backpack rest. How bloody good was that? Also, I think it's the first time in history this might be said. Um, my flyer went in the bullseye. <laughs> Listen, that's probably me. We're gonna use these again in a minute when it comes to the accuracy testing. I'm, I'm not happy with that. I know we can do better. My question is, you guys will see this much better than me. Is that two pellets? That has to be four pellets in there. Either that, wait. Either that, or I totally missed. I believe it was the third shot. It, it basically just looked like this. I don't know if that hole looks bigger than that one. I'm gonna leave that to you guys to be the judge, but 5p, 5p piece of truth, and the whole thing is pretty much under that 5p piece, even with the flyer. I mean, without the flyer, just look. Right, next up, good old super domes. I'm not gonna lie to you. I was kind of rooting for the Super Domes to win. I didn't cheat, I promise you, but I was kind of... Oh, let me get out of the light a little bit. No, nope, turns out there is no light. Well, I kind of wanted the Super Domes to win and just look at that. That is five shots. Admittedly, shot off a rest, but five bloody shots. We have had PCPs less accurate than this. <laughs> I'm going to make... I'm not going to say too much yet, just in case, because we've got one more accuracy test I really, really want to do. You might have noticed that the blue trailer of Doom is not there anymore. And there's a, it's calmed down now. There was a little bit of gust when we were shooting, but it looks like it's calming down. What I'm gonna do, forget bugger 35 yards. Don't care about that. We want the full kahuna. We're going to, if I can, I'm gonna put my chair and rest on this. Not on that, hopefully. And we're gonna go the full on 40 yards. So I'm gonna get everything ready get the target set up at 40 yards and we're going to go air arms and super domes again. I might off screen have a little play with the QIS and the SMK blacks. If they're any good, I'll include them as well, but we'll have a look. We'll see what happens. You don't know, but this is going to be, uh, yeah, I'm not saying anything yet. I'm going to say it after this test. If it's rubbish at 40 yards, you never know. My luck might run out. I'm not going to say it. If it's good, I'm going to make a prediction. So 40 yards, let's see what we can do. Right then, so our 40 yard test result. Not bad, but I'm a little bit annoyed at the same time. When I say not bad, I actually mean I'm freaking ecstatic. Um, the, obviously with the super domes, what you can see there, that is absolutely immense. Um, I have got to come clean though. Where's my five pants? I have got to come clean. Um, it wasn't like we usually do 25 yards, then immediately film the 40 yard testing. It wasn't quite as immediate as that. Yes, we usually have a couple of shots, obviously to adjust zeros and all that sort of thing. 
but I've actually had about an hour's practice because I don't usually shoot at 40 yards with spring guns and I knew that this could do better and better and better each time I'm using it. In fact, if I pan it up, you can see just how much dimmer it is now than what it was earlier. I've been shooting quite a lot. This wasn't just one take and done. I'll put it that way. This took a lot of practice. What I'm actually going to show you, obviously the super dome's at 40 yards. That's five shots and Jesus flipping Christ. This is what I'm talking about. It is an insanely accurate gun and again, with dear old domes. Unfortunately, I don't actually have any JSBs on me to test it because that would have been really interesting too. The air arms at 25 and 40 yards, this is where I get a little bit annoyed. At 25 yards, that I'm sure is me up there. I'm almost positive that's me. And then you've got, I think four in here. I'm not sure, I'll let you be the judge. Still just about a five pence group, 25 yards. At 40 yards, things do open up. Now that is actually two, if you can see that. That's two. We've got three shots under the five pence piece. The other two, just I just couldn't quite manage it. it it's, I'm fairly confident it's me. And the reason why I say this is, I'm going to show you now, here's two target cards. Now, the top one here is Super Domes. This is like when we first started zeroing. So you can see here, first shots was going way off. You can see it sort of splatting into the frame there. And I think there's a splat down here somewhere as well. Way off. But then it started, we adjusted zero and you can see it's coming up with a lovely cluster there, lovely cluster here, beautiful cluster there. In fact, that's five pence right there. So I knew, super domes at least, it was going to be good. Air arms weren't quite so pretty. Now this is a reused card. Those are two two holes, so you can basically just ignore them, disregard those. I think the air arms can do better. I mean, if you take a look, you've got three there, one, one, put the five pence down, and you've, except this one, you've got four under that five pence piece. You can see it was a bit messier zero in this. It's a bit more scattered, but it can do it, I'm sure. If I had another day, I could mimic what I did with the Super Dome group. To be fair, I was bloody lucky to get that on camera because that never really happens. But I'm sure I could mimic that group there. But either way, like I said, it, it wasn't an immediate go out and shoot. I did have a couple of goes at this because I could tell the gun could do more and more and more. In fact, if you want to have a little look around, you can see there is target cards basically everywhere. <laughs> I, I did what I could on this one. Accuracy wise, immense absolutely immense. I did try QIS at the 40 yard mark with me at least. I just couldn't make any use of them whatsoever. Um, the SMK blacks were every bit as bad, in fact worse. They scattered all over the place. 25 yards, they'd be usable, but here, super domes. Good old super dome wins of the day. Accuracy wise, well it doesn't get for a spring gun that much better than that, is all I'm going to say about that. That is a tremendously accurate gun, and it's not even going to be close to let it in. It's had more pellets through it than most of the guns on this review. I reckon we probably put about 250 through it, maybe three, 300. It's had a bit more of a run in, but it's still not even had a tin through it, I'd quite happily say. In fact, actually, all right, so it's got that many air arms from a more or less new tin, and that many super domes from a tin that was had about 20% taken out of it to begin with. So. Yeah, it, <laughs> just, just showing you, it has definitely had a few shots through it. But either way, it goes to show that, again, the thing we've noticed with Cometa is, above all else, you do get a flipping accurate gun. You really do. Right, I'm now going to say the thing, the prediction I was, I, I was talking about earlier. That prediction is, not so much after my review, I'm a small fish compared to everybody else, simple as. It is what it is, we're getting there. When some of the bigger boys start reviewing these and people start taking notice, you mark my words, you watch and see if these don't start turning up in a lot of the HFT competitions and things like that, because that is an immense bit of kit. It really is. A little bit of work on the trigger, and then you've got a world beater. I'm going to say that here and now. But we still need to chronograph the gun one more time just to see how much he's running. Has the power gone up? Has the power settled down? We'll take a look. So we're going to, going to get the chronograph out. We've actually left it out. And let's see what she's running at now. So then, our final verdict of the finale of the Cometa Springer line. What do we think of the Fusion? Well, you probably know what's coming, but first thing we need to look at is those chronograph results. Now, this is the first test that we did. Spread 20 FPS, standard deviation 4.96, and average power or velocity was 775, which translates to 11.2 feet pounds. So, if we go back, 
There we go. Then go back to what we just did. You can see there we did have a, a misfire on this, but we did go to 21 to make up for it. You can see the average velocity has gone down to 765. Uh, the spread has gone up to 22. Now, the reason for that is, where is it? Shot eight, if you take a look, we got very unlucky. Now, we don't weigh the pellets, or we haven't been doing it lately. And I think we had just a bit of a porky pellet go through there, because the spread without that is about 17 FPS. The thing I will mention is the rifle is actually more consistent anyways, because if you take a look, the standard deviation has gone from 496 to 4.71. So it's definitely moving in the right track. We just got a little bit unlucky. Now, now we talk about what we actually think of the, I keep nearly saying Ford Fusion, the Cometa Fusion. I'm going to get some negatives out of the way first. Uh, you know, we always do that. No gun is perfect. Uh, the trigger blade and guard, once again, is plastic, not the best. Um, on top of this, it's a little bit, the trigger, Again, it's not really a negative. The, the pull on it is lovely. It really is. But you've just got that little bit of grittiness before that second stage. And then just a little bit of pressure and pop, off she goes. It's just, it feels like the sears just need a little bit of polishing to get that out. If you get that done, it'd be an absolutely beautiful trigger unit. Like I've already said, is it a record trigger? No, it's not. Is it better than every other budget gun trigger that I've ever shot? Yes, it is. Simple as. It doesn't feel like a budget trigger. It feels like a nicely sorted trigger, but it doesn't feel like a record trigger. But then not many triggers out there really do, if we're being honest with each other. Right, now that's pretty much it. Oh, that's the other negative, potentially. It's a very long boy. This is not a short or small gun. You can see there, even just the barrel poking through is a fairly long unit on there, and I'm having to lean back to get the whole thing in frame. That being said, it does behave itself very, very well when you put it to the shoulder. It's not even really a heavy gun. It comes out, was it uh, 7.6 pounds going off memory? Something like that, the mid sevens. It's not a heavy spring gun at all. I mean, with the scope on there, you're probably gonna be looking eight plus-ish. It's a fairly hefty scope on there. It's the Konus Pro 550 4 to 16 by 50 scope. Lovely bit of glass on it, so I thought we'd go for that again. It's hard to pick a negative when you know I'm madly in love with it. Let's start moving over some of the positives now, what we really, really like. First things first, again, you might like this, you might not, the aesthetics of the thing. It, in my opinion, is a beautiful gun. Now, I did originally have reservations about it. When I first saw the pictures and I saw that muzzle break, two things went off in my head. One, why did they put it there? It's a spring gun, sub 12 feet pounds, at least, obviously, the UK models. It's probably not gonna do a whole lot. And two, please, God, don't be plastic. Well, it might do something. To be fair, it's not a harsh kicking gun at all. Hopefully you saw that earlier at the handling section where I just rested it in my open palm and it barely even bounced. Um, the other thing is, I actually really quite like it now and it's not plastic. That is metal. You can almost see the, uh, the grain in the metal, shall we say, going through there. It's a lovely looking thing. It really is. That, the, the dot pattern checkering, what you can see on there, is fantastic. And that adjustable cheek piece poking through. Now, normally, I like my spring guns looking traditional, but considering this is basically designed as an out and out target gun, I think that actually really suits the rifle when you see that jutting out like that. The other thing I want to show you as well is the grain in the wood. Now, this is beech. This one is not walnut. However, take a look at this. Now, you know I'm a big fan of the Remington Sabre and even the Express stocks with the grain running through, but just look at that. That is gorgeous. It really, really is. Performance-wise, the gun is excellent. Through the chronograph, the numbers are about average, to be fair. I won't say it's stellar, what it's doing at the moment. They're about average, but it is definitely still running in. It might just be a bit of a, takes a while for this one to bloom. Handling-wise, it is fantastic. I'm just reaching over now to get the target cards. Apologies if that's a bit awkward. Handling-wise, it is fantastic. And on top of this, there is, although you might not have, we forgot to do the test, we put it up to the lapel mic. Uh, there is no twang, once again, with the spring gun whatsoever. Hopefully, it's close enough to the mic that you will then still be able to hear. It's just a and then the slight ping off that spring, just like the Ultra Short Carbine. No twang, just a reverberation off the spring. Now we get to the really good bit, which is accuracy, which I had a feeling, or I was hoping, this was gonna be really, really good anyway. Now, like we said, there is a slight caveat with this, and that is that I did spend a lot more time on this than what I did with maybe some of the other spring guns that we tested, and even the Ultra Short Carbine and the Fenix 400. And that is simply because at the 40 yard mark, I mean, hang on, there's just a few of the target cards that I've shot. Um, but yes, uh, with the 40 yard, oh, there it goes. With the 40 yard test that we was doing, 
but I could see it, it was me that was misbehaving with the gun, not the gun. So I practiced and practiced and practiced. And it goes to show, as they say, it really does make perfect. That's our 40 yard group, just very quick once again with the five pence piece parked next to it, or not quite covering it up. I can't, I mean, a flyer's a flyer at the end of the day. It's a 20 pence group, maybe-ish, just because of that one flyer. With someone who actually knows what they're doing, I'm sure you'd probably just get that at 40 yards, which is immense. We've got PCPs. Like I may have already said, a PCP will do it easier. You've got to put barely any time in to get something like that, but that will embarrass PCPs downrange. 25 yards, I mean, it's, it's a no-brainer. The air arms pellets were, were pretty good. At long range, they seem to open up vertically a little bit too much for my liking, but they're pretty good. But overall, I genuinely think that when, as I've already said, the bigger reviewers start picking these up and paying attention to Cometa and things like that, the people with the hundreds of thousands of views and all that sort of stuff, when people start taking notice, you're going to see a hell of a lot of these on the FT tours and things like that. These guns have got so much potential that it is ridiculous. A little bit of work on that trigger, or if there's a tuning company out there watching this, please, Will, if you're watching this, make us a metal trigger blade and guard to go in there. I would buy them off of you. That is, it would make such a good looking gun and even that metal blade would just give it that much nicer feel and pull on there. There's very little to knock on this gun, which leaves us to the question that we always ask, who is this going to suit? Hunters or target shooters? Well, it's got the performance to hunt. You can see that right here and right now, but it's big. It's a big old gun. Hopefully you can see that. We're having to keep moving the camera across. Dragging that through, say, the bushes, like what you can see there and things like that, is not going to be a fun time. It's, that barrel's going to get snagged, you name it. She's a through and through target gun. If you want to get a hunting gun, you get the ultra short carbine or even maybe even the standard Fenix, simple as. This one is a little bit on the big side. As a target gun, however, you will struggle, and this is a very bold claim, and this is coming from someone who is a big Virarc fan, you will struggle to get a spring gun that is as accurate as that. And this is pretty much straight out the box as well. The Virarcs might be a tiny little bit less pellet fussy. I don't know, we didn't get a chance to test JSB. To be fair though, I mean, you saw how this grouped with um, even the SMK Blacks, it shot pretty damn well. Not at 40 yards, granted, but at 25 yards, it even clustered those up. This, oh, how do I put this without upsetting people? This is, this is really difficult. If you gave me a HW95 and said, do you think you could outshoot my 95 with this? I wouldn't go, well, no, it's a fire arc. Do you know what I mean? I'd say, I will give you a freaking good run for your money if I do not beat you. Genuinely. Don't take my word for it. There's quite a lot of favorable reviews about the fusions out there at this moment in time. People saying similar things to me. It is a cracking gun. I don't care if I'm waffling on it right now. You know I'm a Springer man. When I have got basically the ideal package in front of me, Springer that not many people have heard of, immediately it gets underdog status. Immense barrel on there and it's beautiful at the same time and sensibly priced to go with it. You're not paying 400 quid for a fusion. Not even close. It's just my ideal gun <laughs> simple as this one might not even go for sale this one again like the little 300 what was gonna do this one's gonna end up in my cabinet i think because it is so good it really is we're gonna keep it and at a later date we're gonna compare this and the ultra short carbine we're gonna maybe do some shoot off videos against your virarcs your air arms your wolfers all that sort of gear. And again, the Wolfers, they're another good spring gun that punches above their weight. They're not, with exception to the underlevers, they're about 270 quid if you get the centuries and things like that. They're bloody lovely guns as well. But I think we need to do a video series in the future. We need to get the PCPs out of the way where we put this and the ultra short carbine up against some of the carbine Germans, some of the, the, the air arms rifles, things like that, and just see how this stacks up against them. Because I genuinely think that this will not head and shoulders above them, perhaps, but it'll fight them tooth and nail, simple as. And I'm gonna upset a lot of people when I say this too. Even with this, I actually think it's a better looking gun than all of them, with exception to maybe that. But that's it for our Fusion review. I'm so sorry that I've waffled on so long. You can tell that I'm madly in love with this. It's a cracking gun. If you can find one, if you know someone that's got one, Ask them if you can try it. If you know someone at the range, say, yeah, fetch it down and just don't take my word for it. 
shoot it, simple as. But anyways, thank you ever so much for watching. I have gone through two or three bottles of water while I've been filming this today. Um, if I can survive to walk home, we'll get this uploaded as soon as we can. And as we always say, if you've got any questions, never hesitate to put a comment down below. I do try to read and get in touch and respond to all of them. And if you're interested in the Cometa Fusion, get in touch with us at www.bigdansairguns.co.uk. If you're not local, we can transfer as well. So we can have your potential new shiny new toy on its way to you. We also test every single gun that we have and we'll send you the chronograph report. If there's something you're not happy with, let us know. We'll even happily accuracy test it for you. So thank you ever so much for watching. It's been an absolute pleasure shooting this gun and shooting the Cometas, it's got to be said. Big thanks for ASI for trading with us and letting us have a play with these. Uh, next up, I think we need to start looking at some PCPs. Or say we get an Orion out here, maybe a few of the, uh, maybe do the Advance, maybe the, uh... oh, that's it actually. Oh no, the Benjamins. We've got a few of the Benjamins to do, and even the Crossman Armada, I think, is begging for a review as well. So, I mean it this time. Thanks ever so much for watching, and as always, take care.